So today we're going to talk about still ionic naming. So still a, a compound between a metal and a nonmetal. Okay. Metals are found on what sides of the periodic table? What side of the periodic table? Uh, left. left. Good. And nonmetals are found on the right side of the periodic table. So we're going to focus today on um, those elements with multiple charges. Okay. And so where are those found on the periodic table? The bottom. Uh, kind of. In the middle, right? These are in the transition uh, metals, okay? So those have multiple charges. And do you see beside them how they have Roman numerals next to them? Okay, those Roman numerals tell you the charge. So if you look at um, titanium, that first one, number 22, says titanium could be plus 4, which in Roman numerals looks like this, or it could be plus 3, right? So that Roman numeral is telling us which version of titanium we're working with. Okay, that's all the Roman numeral tells us. So we only have to work with Roman numerals for those sets of elements that take on multiple charges. So we would never need to include a, a Roman numeral with calcium, right? Because calcium can only have one charge. We would never need to include a Roman numeral for like potassium, right? Because potassium can only have one charge. So the only time we use Roman numerals is in the written version of the words, right? The written versions, they don't go into compounds at all. The Roman numeral goes with the written word, and it's only for these transition metals, okay? So let's start looking at how we can um, work with those, okay? So let's just start with some examples here. Cu2S, okay? Cu2S. So I've given you the balanced formula. We're going to try to give the written name now. Okay? Cu2S. With these copper, right, do we see that Cu is copper? Copper is found number 29. Okay? And um, with this copper, sometimes it's hard to know, like, which version we're working with. So we can start with our negative ion, right, our anion. It never changes charges, okay? So let's just think about it in terms of its charges now. We'll kind of work backwards. What is the charge on sulfide all the time? Negative two. Negative two. So if we know sulfide is always a negative two, and we have two of those coppers to balance out a negative two, what's the charge on copper have to be? Plus one, right? If I've got a negative two in sulfur... And I know I have to have two of those coppers to balance it out. They each have to have a charge of plus one. Okay, does that kind of make sense? It will also work this way. Remember that cross method that we did last time? It will work the same way. So if there's a, a variable left off, we think it's a one. So we would cross it back up. Cross it back up. And that would leave us with Cu plus one, S minus two. Okay. How do we feel about that? Okay, not so much? No, okay. Um, how many of you do that cross-down method where you just do the crossing? Okay, so this works the same way. We're just doing it backwards. We're just reversing it. So if I have... Oops. Okay. If I have Cu2S, okay, if there's no um, subscript there, I assume it's a 1, right? So if I'm going to reverse the crossing that I did to get me to this balanced formula, this would cross up this way, and this would cross up this way. This, the plus one always has to come first, so that would mean that my charge on copper is plus one and sulfide is minus two. The only reason we do that is to figure out what this charge is so we can write our formula. Okay. So our final answer looks like this, copper one sulfide. Right? The whole reason we had to get to that charge was to, to figure out which version of copper we were using. Okay, does that make sense a little bit or not so much yet? Yeah, go ahead. Why did you make the 2 and negative 2? Yeah. Okay, so when we uh, do the cross-down method to start, let's say we had just started with this, plus 1 and S minus 2, right? Whenever we do the cross-down method, we ignore the charges, and then we do the cross. So all I did was put the charges back in. So we knew the negative one comes second, the positive one comes first. So going up, you would That's right. That. Going up, we would put the charges back in. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Okay. So it'll always be the negative one comes second, the positive one comes first. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Um, this is a positive one for copper. Where did I put a negative, right? Did I put it up here on accident? Mm -hmm. Where do you see a negative one at? Okay, that's all right. Okay, no, that's okay. Let me know if, if I accidentally put a negative, I didn't mean to. Copper should be a positive. Okay? All right, let's try some other ones. Let's try some other ones. Please. What if I did... Um, just C-U-S now, right? Not C-U-2-S, but I did C-U-S. So here's a little bit of an issue, right? We now have one-to-one -one ratio with these elements, a one-to-one -one ratio. So we don't know what version of copper we're using. That's what we're trying to figure out, okay? In general, we can name this copper sulfide. Sulfide, right? We know it's going to be copper sulfide. What we don't know is the Roman, num Roman numeral that goes in between there, right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. We know it's going to be copper sulfide. We don't know which version of copper we're working with. So let's try to figure out how we can, how we can do that. Okay, if it's a one-to-one -one ratio between copper and sulfide, right, do we see that this is a one-to-one -one ratio? No. Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Okay. So if we know it's a one-to-one -one ratio and we know sulfide always has a charge of negative 2, right? Because that's what our periodic table says. Sulfide always is a negative 2. Mm -hmm. And it's a one-to-one -one ratio. What does car or copper have to be? Two. Two. Plus 2. Okay, so we're going to put a 2 in parentheses here. Okay? The cross method is a little bit stickier here, right? Because realistically, that's a 1 and 1. But if we bring these up, those aren't the real charges, right? Sulfur is not a minus one. So that's the problem with that cross method is that sometimes it's not true because this is really two to two. Does that make sense? We've reduced it. So when you use that cross method, it's fine, but you have to make sure you're understanding the ratios that go into it as well. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, so if we wouldn't do the cross method, we'd have to really see that it was a two to two um, you know, which narrows down or reduces down to a one-to-one -one ratio, okay? We feel a little bit better or not so much yet? Not yet. Not yet? Okay, we'll get there. So our final written version was copper 2 sulfide. Okay, let's try uh, and look here at iron this time. Fe3N2. So you can always just start by the, you know, doing the cross method. That's fine. We would bring this back up, and we'd bring this back up, and that would leave us with an iron. What would iron's charge be? Plus two. Plus two. And then that would leave us with nitrogen. What's its charge? Minus, Minus three. Does this charge right here for nitrogen match what we think it should be? No. Yes. 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 Then that means the cross method will work, right? If we cross them up in this charge does not match what we think it should be, then we've got a problem, right? Then we did some reducing. Uh, that's going to make the cross method a little, bit, uh, a little bit sticky, okay? But if this is what we expect it to be, then that means we're good to go, right? So that means iron is what version? We would say iron two. two. And then what would we finish it with? Nitride. nitride. Good. Iron two nitride. Okay. So let's try now another version of iron nitride. Okay, why don't you try this one on your own? Okay, anyone want to volunteer what they got? Yeah, sure, Jake, what do you think? Raise your hand if you agree. Perfect. Very good. Okay, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. They have to cancel out. Nitride is always at minus three, so iron has to be a plus three in this case. Okay, so we have to have a Roman numeral for any of those positive ions that have multiple charges. So if you would have just given me uh, the answer iron nitride just like that, right, it's no good. 
you have to give me the Roman numeral that goes with it. Okay, do I have to include a Roman numeral for magnesium? No, right, where's magnesium at? Group what? Group two, right, it's a plus two charge, there's no um, other option. So you don't have to give Roman numerals for those type of situations, okay? Um, let's go from words now to the compound. Okay, so let's say that I gave you 10 for oxide. 10 for oxide. 10 is the abbreviation SN. Okay, so that is a little bit easier to look for on the periodic table with that. In group 14. Okay, when we start with word form, right, we're going to start out with each of our ions separately. We're going to combine them to get a final product of, what you got? SNO2. SNO2, perfect. Uh, yeah. SNO2. So we can't say, how many of you had SN2O? No. No? You just had S SNO? I said I had SN2O4. SN2O4. Oh, okay, okay. So if you have SN2O4, uh, what happens with these guys? Uh, they have to be reduced. Yeah, very good. So we want the smallest version of all of those um, atoms, right? We want the, the relative number. Very good. So SNO2 should have been our final answer there. Very good. Huh? Okay. Start adding polyatomic ions to them. So they have a set name and a set charge. So hydroxide is always OH minus 1, right? Phosphate is always PO4 minus 3. Okay, sulfate is always SO4 minus 2. Okay, so they have a set name and they have a set charge. So it's really easy to name with polyatomic ions. It's literally just the positive cation, whatever it is, and the polyatomic ion, right? There's no changing of any names, anything like that. All we have to do is work hard to get them to balance to be neutral, okay? So do you want to start with... Um, okay. We're just going to start with a word form. So let's say I want you to give me the compound for sodium... This is just still ionic naming, but it's with polyatomic ions. Okay, so let's give me sodium nitrate. Okay, you're going to give me the chemical formula for sodium nitrate. Okay, find sodium. Sodium is Na. Okay, and its charge is plus 1. Nitrate is NO3 and it's a minus one, okay? Something that we should think about with polyatomic ions is that this subscript never changes. That is not something that is reducible, okay? So if you have a subscript within a polyatomic ion, it never changes, right? It has a set formula, a set name, and a set charge. So that three in nitrate is never reducible, okay? These are each have a charge of plus one and minus one. So don't they just go together pretty easily? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So our final product should just look like this. N-A-N-O-3. That's it. Okay. Right? It's that simple. Right? It was a one charge and a one charge, a plus and a minus. So they just are going to fit together, balanced one to one. Okay? Does that make sense? A little bit, maybe. Okay. Let's try now a little, one a little bit more complex. Let's try magnesium. Oops. I can't write today. Magnesium hydroxide. Magnesium hydroxide. Okay. Do we see any issues here? Yeah. Okay. They're not going to balance just fitting right together, right? Yeah. So you can do it a couple ways. Does everyone in here pretty much like the cross method? Is that what everyone's kind of feeling? Or yeah. do most of you do the charges? I can do 
Either way, how many of you use the cross down method pretty predominantly? Okay, all right, this is what I'm going to show. Okay, so the cross down method, we get rid of the charges and we cross and we cross, okay? So that would leave us with MgOH2. Okay, do we want two hydrogens or do we want two hydroxides? We want two hydroxides. So when we need more than one of a polyatomic ion, we put them in parentheses, okay? That would be something that I'd maybe write down, okay? So like put it in stars here or something. When you need more than one, uh, I'll just put greater than one of a polyatomic ion, you must use parentheses. Okay, so when you have to have more than one of a polyatomic ion, you have to use parentheses. The number outside of the parentheses is reducible. Okay, anything locked to the polyatomic ion is not able to be reduced. Okay, but outside the, the parentheses could be reduced. Okay, so if you want to write that down underneath of it, maybe that would be a good idea. Okay, outside the parentheses can be reduced, inside cannot. Let's try calcium sulfite. Is sulfite one of your cards? Either way, it should be on your um, it should be on your table. Is it on there? Yeah. Okay. Calcium sulfite. Okay, did we start out with calcium plus 2 and sulfite minus 2? Okay, so if we do that cross method, right, we're going to get rid of our charges. We're going to bring it down, down, which would leave us with Ca, parentheses, SO3, parentheses 2. Sorry, Ca2, SO3, 2. Now, can we reduce that? This can be reduced, okay? So now, that leaves us with Ca, SO3. 3, and a 1 right here, right? If there's a 1, we don't even need the parentheses. So if we've reduced it to not need more than 1, you can drop the parentheses again. Okay, does that kind of make sense? If there's no subscript outside of our parentheses, we don't have to have them, right? But if we need more than 1, we got to include them. Okay? So because these 2s were reducible, that allows us to drop the parentheses altogether as well. All right, we're going to do a couple more here. I'm going to give these up to you to do on your own. Okay, so let's try these on your own. The second one, you're going to give me the written name. Okay, so you have three of them there. I want you to try them on your own. You should give me the formula, then the name for the second one, then the formula for the third. Who wants to volunteer their answer for the first one? Lithium phosphate. Anybody? All right, Jacob, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, so if you only have one, you don't need them. But yes, otherwise perfect. So Li3PO4, that should have been our final answer. How many of you had that? 
Maybe? Yeah, kind of. Okay, so here, if we have parentheses and then a one, we just leave off the one and the parentheses both. Okay? So it, just like if there was a subscript with a regular one, you just leave it off. Same thing goes with polytonic ions. Okay? Second one, what's the um, written words for AL, parentheses, OH, parentheses, three? What is it? Yeah, Jake. Aluminum hydroxide. Aluminum hydroxide. Perfect. Do we need a Roman numeral there? No, no right? Because aluminum can only be a plus three. Okay. Last one. Zinc phosphide. Hannah, what'd you have? Z N three. And then in parentheses, P O three. And then outside the parentheses is a two. Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Z N three. P O three. Two. Okay, are you feeling pretty good? Okay.